What's up guys, Jeeves here. If you're new to the channel, I post videos every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think you're gonna enjoy the content I have in this video, so let's get into it. We got all the numbers. We know what the interior looks like. We know that there's pops and bangs, and I have all the details right here on my secret pad. We're gonna go through the official images. Um, we're gonna talk through all the highlights. I read through all the notes of it, and I pulled out the main points that you guys would be interested in. I felt, you know, it's, it's my duty to bring this news to you, even though Ford is not bringing it to the United States. So let's jump into it here. Let's just, let's just get right into it. First off, here's a look at the car. Uh, it's rocking, it looks like Michelin Pilot, Sup Pilot Super Sports, uh, Pilot Sport 4S's. I always mess that up. Um, red brake calipers. Wheels look decent. I like the wheels. Front end looks pretty good. The, my problem with it is it looks very similar to the, the last Mazda 3. Um, I'll throw an image up of the last Mazda 3 here, but don't you agree? It kind, they've kind of like softened the look of it. I don't think it looks bad but it's just not as rigid as the old ST, and I kind of liked how the front end looked. But it's not bad, because I like the honeycomb grill, the headlights. Um, and they've also taken some design from the old ST. If you take a look at the lines along the hood there, uh, the little bulges um, kind of a nod to what they did not send the United States. This next image here, uh, shot at night, so you get to see the, take a look at the headlights. Um, again, they look good. I like the uh, LEDs around the perimeter. Uh, of the headlight there, uh, fog lights as well. Again, wheels look good. They're like a darker, even darker than Rado Gray. Uh, I don't, again, it's just the the sides, of, it's more of like a feminine shape to it. So I guess we know that the Ford Focus respects women, which is good. Um, it will come in a wagon and a hatch, 275 horsepower and 310 foot-pounds of torque. 310, that's huge. Um, or 420 uh, Newton meters, which is how it's uh, measured overseas. So, which I guess is more relevant for this anyways, it's not coming here. But, I mean, that's a ton of power. Luckily to go along with that though, they have an electronic uh, limited slip differential, which is a first for Ford. Uh, zero to 60 is gonna come in under six seconds, which is, uh, that's kind of what you can expect from a front wheel drive car. I mean. When I see a front wheel drive car zero to 60 time, I kind of take it with a grain of salt. So much of it comes down to the driver because it's very hard to launch these cars and, and understand exactly where you're gonna get the best traction and best acceleration times. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fast. I don't know how fast, um, but it says under six seconds. For example, the Civic Type R, I've seen all the tests and reviews online, and I've had people test it at 4.9 seconds and people test it at 5.8 seconds. So who's right? You know, who knows? Yeah, so then it also is gonna have a six-speed manual, which is great, but it will also have what they call a quick-shifting seven-speed uh, transmission. I don't know if it's a dual clutch, um, but they said it's quick-shifting. I don't know what that means. I, I'm not totally disappointed that they offered it in an automatic transmission. I hope that that pushes its sales up enough to keep the ST line going. Um, but it's, I don't know how good that transmission will be. You know, if you get like a PDK transmission on a porch, you know it's gonna be immediately responsive, reliable, it's the best. But if you get it on a sub $30,000 car, they're generally not that good. So that could take away from some of the driving experience. Um, less than two and a half percent of the cars currently manufactured in the world uh, are manual transmissions. So my advice to you is if you wanna keep the manual around, buy the manual. Don't get the automatic transmission. I don't care if you're sitting in traffic every day for your commute, deal with it for the good of the people. It also has continu continuously controlled dampening. There's different drive modes, so I guess you can s select how stiff you want the springs to be. Jump to this next photo here, just another shot of it going around a turn. Here's a shot of it from the side. Uh, so the way it's stanced, I mean, I, I think it looks good. It looks very good from the side here. It does have somewhat look like the front of the old one. It's a sleeker design. It looks like a little more squat. Um, and the back of the spoiler kind of kicks up, which is a nice uh, little taste to it. But it just looks like a Mazda 3. I mean, if you cut the front end off of that, it's a, you'd confuse it with a Mazda 3. I think most people would. Um, but that's the design they gave us. 
Uh, so the, Leo Roque said that we incorporated learnings from our Ford GT supercar and the Ford Focus RS to develop this mid-sized performance car with a degree of flexibility unique within its segment. Now with the notes I've been reading on this car, it seems that the drive modes are drastically different. That they see, That's what I've taken from it is when you hit this button, this car totally changes. So I guess in the normal drive mode, it's very comfortable and compliant, but when it's in sport or track mode, it's a totally different animal. And we're gonna get into some details as to why um, it, why I think they're saying this. They put some technology in the ST that is unbelievable for a car that's as low as this price point is. Um, just another shot of it here, probably outside of their secret ST factory. Looks awesome there. A uh, little back shot. Now this is the first time we're gonna see the rear of the car with the uh, dual exhaust, but on the uh, outside of, of the right and left of the car. So. You know, we went from the center exit, which was awesome, but you run that for five years, you want to change it up. This looks good. The tips look nice. Um, Europe always seems to get better exhaust tips than the United States, so I bet ours would differ from this if we did get this. Um, but it looks, it looks good. I think the back of the car looks very nice. So here's another shot of the back of it while it's moving. Just a closer shot of the exhaust tips. I think the back looks decent. The lights on the old ST, uh, they were really unique to the car. I think they should have kept those in some way. They kind of eliminated that. It was cool how they wrapped around the side of the car and they were big. Another thing that's interesting, it's gonna be manufactured in Germany. Uh, the rumors were true about it having a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine. So it does have that and it's also now gonna have a low inertia twin scroll turbo. So that's going, going to uh, bring your full torque at even a lower RPM, and then you're still gonna have more turbo for the higher RPMs. That's the nice part of a twin scroll turbo, is one scroll takes low end, one scroll takes high end. So that's that's just a brilliant thing. I actually thought my ST had that for a long time, and found out after reading the owner, owner's manual, it does not. Um, but if you watch a Motor Trend video on them reviewing the ST, Carlos says it has a twin scroll. You're wrong, Carlos. It is. Also, now here's here's where we get in some of the crazy stuff. It has an electronically actuated wastegate. And it also has anti-lag technology for sport and track mode driving. So if you're unfamiliar with anti-lag technology, I first saw it when I was, uh, who was it, Tanner Faust was showing one of his rally cars off. And basically, in a rally car, when you flick the switch and the anti-lag comes on, the car turns into a whole new beast because when you take your foot off the accelerator to shift, it keeps the speed of the turbo up to keep boost pressure up so you don't fall out of boost and have to go back in. So that is like a cr insane that they put that in the ST. I'm so happy that they did. And I can't wait to see this comparison between the Focus ST and the uh, Velocitor N. The Velocitor, um, I think looks better, but this is probably gonna drive 10 times better. This kind of blow, this blows the Velocitor out of the water as far as uh, driving technology. I bet this is a much better car to drive. But again, we'll see. So I, I just couldn't believe that. Um, yeah, so basically you shift, it keeps the throttle wide open so you can hold up boost pressure. Uh, the manual transmission is also 7% shorter and it has rev matching technology. So the way they describe that is for the novice driver, it gives you the ability to feel like you're heel towing, gives you, I guess, the benefit of heel towing. Um, and then if you're an experienced driver, you can go ahead and turn that off. A lot of cars like the uh, BMW M2, for example, to turn off rev match downshifting, you have to turn all of the, con all of the controls off. So that's kind of, a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to turn everything off. Um, they just want to turn off rev matching and, it, and it's nice that they just have a specific button for that. So let's jump to the interior of the car. Steering wheel, perfect. Nice job, Ford. Seats, they're still Recaro's, but, and it looks like, it does look like they have more room too. So I guess, I guess that's an improvement and a win. You also notice in this picture here, if we zoom in right on the center, uh, gauge cluster is it says launch control. So this does have launch control as well. It also kept a flat bottom steering wheel. Great decision. And it, it's just, it's awesome. The gauges look the same, um, but it does have launch control in the center there. 
really cool. If you look to the left here, you actually see some maybe a hard plastic or aluminum up on the upper part of the door, and then you have a leather, uh, a leather leatherette dressing on the side panel, and then where you rest your elbow also looks like leather. Shifter looks nice. Um, I love the carbon fiber shifter I have, but this still looks like it has a nice round shape to it as opposed to if you didn't have the carbon fiber shifter on your current ST, it's kind of a weird shaped shifter. It's nice that it's just a, a simple ball. That's what any driver would want, just a ball. And then you have the uh, navigation screen here. The applications all look the same. It's sync. Um, I'm still not a fan of these screens just sticking up. It just kind of cheapens every car, but it uh, it doesn't look bad. So another shot here, um, just from a different angle, you can kind of see that there's the center armrest. Again, it's leather, looks nice. Uh, they've, they've, you know what else is good is they have reduced the number of buttons. If you remember back to like 20, 13, 14, what the ST looked like on the center gauge cluster, I mean, it was a mess. Now they've simplified it. You have your screen, you have your couple controls, and that's it. So it's much better there. Here's a better look at the seats. Again, you have the big white Recaro stitching. And see how they look? They look wider. You still get the aggressive bolstering you need. It's very high on your, your thigh area, but it doesn't seem as cumbersome as before. I think the old seat, the seats that I have in my ST3, they look better but I bet these are feel more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, here's a little picture of the, uh, you know, closer up on the steering wheel. Again, the perforated leather, and you have your drive modes up on the steering wheel here. You can click mode, sport, you can go back, all that stuff. Uh, then there's the Bluetooth calling. You also have your ESC off. You have your automatic start, start, stop button. You can turn that on or off. Um, so that looks good. Parking, looks like maybe a parking sensor. You can turn that sound on or off. Coming about run to the front of the car. Um, it's, I, I mean, those lights are pretty good looking. I have to admit that looks very nice. And it also is, I like the honeycomb grill. I like the bigger, uh, the bigger holes there. That looks, looks good as well. Onto the rear, you can just get a closer look at the exhaust tips and the rear lights in the dark. Looks good from that angle. I like that they've even gone as far as painting the lower fascia um, on the rear diffuser of the car. It's a nice little touch. Makes it feel a little more luxury. And then finally, here's a shot of the wheels with the brake calipers. Yeah, I think it's a nice evolution of the ST line and the wheels they've done over the years. Uh, brake calipers look good. I think I would like to see a Brembo brake on the ST, or at least have that option in a performance pack, or just have, you know, like an STI just has STI written on the brakes. That would be kind of nice to have just STI written on there, or or ST written on the uh, this Focus, but you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like, do you like this new refresh of the ST? Me personally, I think the driving dynamics that they've added to this car is more than I would have even wanted them to do. I, like. Thank you, Ford, for listening and paying attention to the competition and all of that. I mean, they've really outdone themselves with this car. It's it's gonna make you question, is it worth getting a Civic Type R? Unless you're just a huge Honda person, you love the Type R. I mean, this is gonna cost way less and it has driving capabilities pretty darn close to that. It even makes some of the Type R technology look outdated. So. Uh, this is really impressive. It's going to be exciting to watch the reviews come out with this versus the uh, Velocitor N. I'm sad we're not getting it in the US, but I also don't know that I would have gotten an ST because, you know, I've had it for several, th over three years now. I've had front wheel drive cars. I want to get something with a different drivetrain. So I don't even know that I would have gotten the ST. Um, unless Ford sent me one for free. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Wanted to bring this video to you as soon as I could. And I'm interested to see what your guys' comments are below. I'm sure it's gonna be, uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting. I'm sure it will be divided. Maybe some Mazda 3 fans will rise up from the ground. It's about all I got for you. So if you're still with me in the video, thank you for watching. I post new videos every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So tomorrow, 9 p.m., I'm gonna be posting, there's a video, I already have it loaded up, ready to go. I hope you enjoy that. But yeah, the, uh, the ST is here. It's all official. Thank you for watching, like the video, and I'll see you next time.